Oh my gosh, is that a genital wart? Following on from my last video about the cutaneous warts, it's now time to talk about genital warts, how they occur, what causes them, and how we can treat them. First up, genital warts are caused by a virus known as human papillomavirus. Now, this is probably the most commonest STI that is out there at this moment in time. And it's really important to know that human papillomavirus has over 150 different strains of the virus. Generally speaking, we can classify those viruses into low-risk viruses and high-risk viruses. The low-risk viruses tend to make up things like genital warts, and the high-risk viruses, which are particular strains, can lead on to the more nastier, more sinister diseases such as cervical cancer. So hopefully that clears up the first misconception that I often hear in clinical practice, which is, do genital warts cause cervical cancer? And the answer is no, because genital warts generally are caused by low risk viruses and cervical cancer we know are caused by common commonly some higher risk viruses of HPV. So now that we've got that out of the way let's talk about genital warts what they are and how we can detect them. Genital warts are exactly that they are areas of maybe flat or raised lesions that can be rough in appearance that typically affect the anus, the vagina, perhaps even inside the vagina, the urethra, the water pipe or even inside of the urethra itself. They can affect men and women and they typically occur because of sexual contact through intercourse. They may also be single which means that you just have one or they may be in a cluster and they may also have a cauliflower like appearance so you might have a bunch of them in a particular area. But what's important to know is that you may actually transmit the virus or human papilloma virus for genital warts but you yourself don't actually experience any visible genital warts as well so that is why safe sex is super important and we'll go through that a little bit later on in the video. How do we get genital warts? Well, they are transmitted through skin-to-skin -skin contact. That means that during intercourse, um, they may be transmitted from the vagina um, or anally as well. It's very rare for them to be transmitted through the oral to the genitalia, but it can happen. Now, once you have got infection by HPV that causes genital warts, it may take some months for it to show up as an actual symptom. This is because the incubation period may be quite long. So that means really that you may have intercourse with somebody who perhaps had a genital wart, but you may not have had any symptoms for say three or four months. And then sometime down the line, you may then start to experience some symptoms of genital warts. Of course, diagnosis should be done by your medical doctor and they'll be able to examine the area, look at it perhaps with a microscope and be able to confidently tell you that that is genital warts or it might be something Else. Okay, Dr. Norris, so I know what the virus is caused by, how it looks like and how it's transmitted, but what if I do get one? What are my treatment options? Well, when it comes to treatment, it's really important to have a chat to your own medical doctor to find out what the best treatment option is for you individually, because some treatments cannot be given if you're, say, pregnant or breastfeeding or have some other medical illnesses. And treatment may take the form of many different options, and some situations, the virus itself may just clear away by itself with no intervention needed. But if you do need some intervention, there are a couple of choices that you may be offered by your doctor. The first of which is something called cryotherapy. Now, this is liquid nitrogen that is sprayed specifically into the targeted areas where the virus sits. Now, it's really important to know that if we do offer you treatment for the virus, we cannot cure the HPV virus, only we can treat the virus-containing skin, which means we can treat the area that has got the virus in it, but you may still carry the virus nonetheless in the background. So the first treatment of which is cryotherapy. Now this is essentially where we use liquid nitrogen, which is a really cold gas, and we spray it onto the area that is affected. And essentially what can happen after that time is you may get a little bit of a blister that comes up after a few weeks, and then gradually it'll scab over and it will fall off. Note to self, this is an uncomfortable procedure. And if you imagine having it done in the, just imagine having it done in your hands, for example, it might be quite uncomfortable there, but if you have to have it downstairs, it is also doubly or triply uncomfortable. But it's not an uncommon procedure that can be done to treat genital warts. The second treatment may be that your doctor might offer you some lotion that you use at home, which tends to be a little bit more civilised and you can do this at home, but you'd have to do it for a sustained period of time and hopefully that will reduce or remove the wart itself. In failing that, you may be offered a cream that can also be used as well, but note this does have to be used daily for three weeks to achieve the optimal results. In some situations where topical treatment or cryotherapy hasn't worked, your doctor may advise you to have some laser treatment to the affected area, which can also help to get rid of the virus-containing skin or the appearance of the genital warts. It's important to note that all of these treatments really do just get rid of the appearance of the genital warts, but you may still be carrying the HPV virus. And what's doubly annoying is that because you do still have the virus, you may still get warts later on in the future. 
okay, Dr. Nora, that sounds reasonable, but I've heard HPV before and I've heard that it can cause cervical cancer. Is there any risk of me having genital warts and then getting cervical cancer later on down the line? Well, as I said at the beginning of the video, and I feel like I should reiterate this again because I see it so much in clinical practice, genital warts are caused by low risk HPV viruses and cervical cancer or other cancers are caused by high risk HPV viruses. So we know that if you were, God forbid, to have a high risk HPV virus, that can affect the cervix and can cause some changes to your cervix. However, genital warts do not transfer into those high risk virus strains. How do we protect ourselves from these strains, these really high risk strains? Well, currently in Australia, there are two different types of HPV vaccinations, both of which actually help to protect you against those high risk strains, number 16 and 18, that can lead on to cervical cancer. One of the other vaccinations also covers you for a number of other strains that actually commonly cause genital warts. And so actually what we're seeing with time is that genital warts incidence is actually decreasing because a lot of the young cohort population of today are receiving vaccinations that also cover them only for cervical cancer cancer, but also for genital warts. And so hopefully the incidence will be decreased. Now, if you are considering a vaccination for this, it's important to note that usually it's most affected in patients who haven't been sexually active yet um, because they haven't got that exposure to HPV. If you're an older adult, it's questionable whether or not it's going to be beneficial to you because you will have had some HPV exposure in the past if you have been sexually active. So vaccination for young populations before intercourse can be effective, but what other ways can we prevent us transmitting genital warts from one person to another? Now, barrier contraception such as condoms or dams may be somewhat effective, but if there is still any skin to skin contact, transmission still can occur. But in saying that, it's still a really good way to keep yourself protected and also prevent yourself from getting any other nasty SDIs. Of course, if you are engaging in any sexual activity and someone's got a glaringly obvious genital wart there, then you may wish just to avoid intercourse or use barrier contraception. But it's still important to know that even if you don't have the appearance of a genital wart, you may still be carrying the virus. And so it can cause transmission through skin to skin contact. So the most important thing is to keep yourself really healthy, because as we know, people who are slightly immunocompromised may be more subjected to getting these infections compared to somebody who is not so immunocompromised. Okay, so there you have it. There's a rundown for genital warts, what they look like, how we treat it, and how the particular strain of HPV is different from the cervical cancer causing strain of HPV and what you can do to reduce your risk of catching genital warts from somebody else. I hope you guys have found that video useful. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate, drop me a line in the comment section below. And for now, take care and stay healthy.